Welcome to the Tyler Werner Show, everybody, on this April 22nd edition, as the circus is in town. And I'm not, I'm not talking about KUR, Bear Fest, or whatever that's coming up, uh, beginning today, actually, and going through the, uh, the weekend here on the KU campus. I'm talking about Philadelphia's newest addition to the Eagles roster, and that is Tim Tebow for those who haven't heard about it, and I, I don't know how you couldn't have heard about it at this point. Quite a, uh, obviously, I mean, this kind of, th- this whole event kind of dates back, or signing, I guess you want to call it, potential signing or storyline, whatever you want to call it, kind of dates back to you know, about a month ago, a little, well, over a month ago, when Tim Tebow was uh, given a workout by Chip Kelly, here in Philadelphia, which, you know, I mean, most, I mean, most people, including myself, thought, it, you know, it didn't really mean anything. Maybe it was just Chip Kelly, you know, doing a little, I guess, some kind of a, a good service, I guess. You know, I mean, because I, I, Tim Tebow, I mean, great guy, obviously, working for ESPN the last couple of years, n- no NFL teams being interested in, in him and Obviously, it's it's clear he he is dead set on playing professional football still. And I mean, I, I you know I I kind of admire the guy for that. Obviously, I mean, he could he could easily you know be a college football analyst on ESPN and whatever the rest of his life, or, and make out fine money wise. You know, he does a lot of great things in the communities and. In this and that, you can go on and on. And uh, I mean, you know, ooh, I mean, what he's, he's do, he does things like partnering with uh, what Pizza Hut to read Dr. Seuss books and stuff like that, and all, all kinds of stuff in the community. <laughs> and uh, and I mean, but he is he's a guy that is still obviously interested in playing in the NFL. And that was, you know, apparent when he wanted to work out um, last month here for the Philadelphia Eagles. And again, a lot, you know, it's one of those things we talked about on the show. A lot of people, I mean, including myself, you know, we didn't think much of it. I mean, we, and we discussed it, I guess, briefly the, the couple days after the workout happened and you know, thought, you know, keep track of the story just in case something is made out of it. And, you know, I mean, nothing was really ever made out of it until this past Monday. Or, or you know, you could even go back to Sunday when news broke all around the world. You can, I mean, for, for lack of a better terminology, I guess, around the world that Tim Tebow is going to be signed on Monday by the Philadelphia Eagles. And, you know, it was one of those, I mean, obviously the news blew up and and everything. And for instance, I mean, Batman Wayne, one of the, uh, you know, frequent listeners of this show, friend, you know, friend that lives out near my, you know, I've known for a, a long time, you know, kind of joked uh, when I posted one of the many story, I, I guess storyline news breaking posts that Tim Tebow was coming to Philadelphia and that we were going to discuss it right here on the Tyler Werner show um, come Wednesday at 11 a.m. as we normally do. And, you know, here it is, 11 a.m. We're talking about it. And Wayne uh commented on the Facebook page, you know, like anybody can at facebook.com slash Tyler Werner show if you want to share your thoughts on this. And Wayne suggested that, you know, Chip Kelly was celebrating 420 a day early. Because, I, you know, obviously, I, I guess that, that holiday, well, for those who 
could call it a holiday or whatever. That was Monday, and you know, coincidentally, uh, the you know the Eagles, uh, Chip Kelly, signed Tim Tebow officially on Monday. But we knew we knew it was going to happen. You know, Sunday is when news was breaking, and you know, it just uh, again, I mean, it just kind of lit up the world. And there's all kinds of, you know, I guess directions to go with this. I mean, I mean again, I mean, the, the intrigue about it is, if anything, Tim T. And I'm gonna, I'm gonna play highlights in a moment. Um, I guess a little, you know, condensing. Uh, four or five minutes or whatever of basically how I addressed last month what I thought with Tim Tebow possibly being a Philadelphia Eagle and what, what the workout may have meant back then. Uh, I'll get to that in a minute because before we, you know, go off too much on, you know, the many directions that we could go off here on the uh, Tyler Werner show today. And I'd like to hear thoughts at 610-683-4058. I know, you know, some people are maybe, you know, huge fans of this move. I, I know, for instance, my brother, one of my older brothers, Matt, um, who is a, a, a Saints fan, I don't know, who became a Saints fan when, for whatever, when Reggie Bush was uh, drafted by him. I, I don't, you know. I don't totally understand, you know, one of those bandwagon things, I guess, you know. I just think somebody owes us an explanation, but, uh, that's all. I, you know, for, you keep track of this on, you know, go to Facebook, and I saw he posted that, uh, you, you know, suddenly it's like now he's like an Eagles fan again or something. Now he's pro-Eagles just because Tim Tebow is here. He's one of these guys who's, you know, Tebow time. And I, I, I think my, well, my other brother, too, um, is is kind of like that as well. A, a big Tim Tebow fan. I guess you know it's the whole intrigue, the whole hype. You know the the personality he is and whatever else. This whole storyline. I know it's very gripping to some guys, and that's why Tim Tebow, who at best is going to be a third string quarterback on this team, or as some would suggest, a uh, you know a guy that they bring in on. Uh, what, fourth and in, in one or something, or a goal line situation, or maybe to run the read option. That That's all he's really, uh, you know, I guess theoretically here to be. And that's that's what, you know, the whole, you know, the whole storyline. He's, sh- uh, you know, he's a Christian on the field and everything he does um, before the games, back when he was playing in the NFL, of course, and things he does with charity. You know the great character guy that he is. How he hasn't been in the you know how he hasn't been playing in the league now for the past few years because nobody has wanted him on their roster. Not not even you know not even the Oakland Raiders. But yet for again, I mean, Chip Kelly has decided to sign him on a one-year deal, and I guess see how he can use Tim Tebow. I, I don't know. We'll, we'll definitely, uh, obviously, it's going to be the focal point to today's edition of the Tyler Werner Show. And just when, with everything that's transpired so far in the Philadelphia Eagles offseason, j- just when we thought it couldn't get any more, uh, I, I don't know, intriguing or awkward, whatever kind of word you want to use there, whatever kind of terminology you want to use there, uh, Chip Kelly reaches out. After a you know a month or so ago, working giving Tim Tebow a workout, which you know many of us thought, eh, it probably doesn't mean that much. It's just Chip Kelly, you know, giving a, I guess a little do, doing a little service there for doing a favor for Tim Tebow, I guess, giving him a workout. Just when we thought things in the off season, you know, couldn't get any more interesting, I guess you could say, Chip Kelly reaches out and signs Tim Tebow. I guess kind of bringing him out of his hiatus from being an NFL quarterback or just, I guess, being in the NFL in general, considering some people suggest that maybe maybe Tim Tebow can be like a, a even a tight end or something. I, I don't know. Nevertheless, I mean, you know, for na- at least for now, you never know. I mean, who knows? Maybe we, we, we saw when 
Tim Tebow was on the New England Patriots a few years ago as a uh, thir- you know third string quarterback, and you know I mean they, I don't know I guess Bill Belichick decided maybe we can uh, I don't know let's see what we can use out of this guy, and then you know come August, and you know we don't we don't have a place for Tim Tebow. This is the end of this subject for me. And essentially, for a long time. yeah, it was uh, basically uh, that was basically. The end of Tim Tebow's NFL career, at least to that point. But here again, I mean, Tim Tebow, for at least for now, we'll see. I mean, you know, Matt Barkley, the third string quarterback for the past couple of years that Chip Kelly drafted, um, or at least we're, we're led to believe that was mainly a, a Chip Kelly draft pick. Two years, and, you know, Matt Barkley, who was once a, uh, you know, a potential number one pick in the NFL draft. Suddenly, you know, just in two years, he has, uh, he has not had a place on this team. It seems, and and perhaps his job as the third string quarterback is on the line now against Tim Tebow. Yes, yeah, so today we're going to talk about uh, all the antics. I don't know. I, I don't know if you want to call them antics. I mean, it's not. Bad antics, not like a you know diva receiver or something like that. But we'll, we'll get into a lot of Tim Tebow talk today. And uh, on the on the other side, we will uh, begin to get into things with you know other topics as well. But mainly on the other side, before I I guess kind of soak my teeth into this discussion and you know get on with my viewpoints, I'll I'll share I guess my Overall, you know, for the, the highlights of my rant, I guess, or I don't know if you would call it, but just, just thoughts that I had from March, the, uh, you know, a couple days after Tim Tebow was worked out by the Philadelphia Eagles. And, and I'll, you know, we'll kind of pick up from there on the, on the topic. Because, I mean, for, for those who have, for those who tuned in, may, you know, maybe remember any of the, the discussion I had on here, I mean, I, I kind of remember, you know, talk a lot of things on here, but, not, you know, as far as my thoughts, um, just a, you know, just a heads up, I mean, nothing really changed. Nothing's changed now that, uh, you know, a month and some days later that Tim Tebow has been signed, uh, you know, I'll, I'll just, I guess I'll foreshadow that whatever I said, um, back, you know, whatever my thoughts were then, I mean, nothing has changed here. For those who have, uh, for those who tuned in and, and remember any of any of my thoughts on that, so we'll we'll get into that on the other side of the Tyler Werner show. Uh oh. We got, but we got, you know, obviously we got some other things we can talk about. Obviously, um, you know, concerning the Philadelphia Eagles, obviously the official 2015 NFL schedule came out yesterday, and we, we obviously we will uh, we will m- maybe do a couple. I guess takes of going down the schedule, at least, you know, me going down the schedule, and picking wins and losses. And I get, I mean, you know, and I'll, I'll, ju- I'll just say that I th- there are some favorable situations. I think the way the schedule is laid out that could potentially push, um, could obviously help the Eagles get an extra win. I, in there, you know, just, just the way the, the, the schedule works out. Because that's, that's the thing. I mean, you look at the schedule. Obviously, you can figure out before the schedule even comes out. I mean, you, a couple months ago, you, we could have talked about how, you know, who exactly the Eagles were going to face in the season. And, I mean, the, you know, the, the home and away games, you know, they, those were, I don't know, a few. I remember a few weeks ago hearing about who they'd play on the road and who they'd play at home. I remember hearing about that a few weeks ago, and you can kind of get a, a you kind of gauge somewhat off of that how you know where the Eagles may end up um, at the end of the season as far as wins and losses. But when you get the you know the order of the games and the situations, you know the I don't know coming off of a, a, a bye week and or coming off of a few extra days from playing a Thursday game the week before or whatever. You know, you kind of you're able to calculate the ebb and flow of a season a little more. 
So we'll, we'll get into that later, obviously. Um, obviously, you know, F- Flyers news. I mean, uh, last week, the uh, Flyers, f- well, Ron Hextall, the Flyers, fired coach Craig Berube. Um, I know a lot of people certainly were not disappointed about that. I mean, it would, I mean, to me, it was kind of a no-brainer. You know, it's not like a an impressive, savvy move that Ron Hextall made here. I mean, it was kind of just like, yeah, we, you know, kind of just a thing like, certainly you can go out and find a better head coach. Especially when it seems like Craig Berube was kind of just thrown in there um, when Peter Laviolette was fired three games into the season uh, the other year ago. But that's a different story in and of itself. So we'll get into that, some possible new head coach options for the Philadelphia Flyers. And uh, we will, you know, certainly we'll, we'll get into some other things with the Philadelphia Eagles. Again, a lot of it revolving around Tim Tebow, but also some guys that have been skipping out, or not skipping out, but guys who will not be at the voluntary off-season workouts coming up shortly. And what it may mean, depending on the guy, it, 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 you know, that we're talking about here. Uh-oh. 610-683-4058 is the number to get in. Yeah, we got, we got a lot to talk about today. It should be a, a fun show. And um, who knows, as, as usual, we'll be on the watch, the lookout for um, Matt Walsh, maybe popping in the studio again, making a, an, an appearance it's almost like a red herring. Uh, yeah, I'd be, I'd be interested in uh, hearing what his thoughts are about this Tim Tebow signing. You know, maybe what his thoughts are on the Philadelphia Eagles schedule coming up. Now, before we hit the first break from the KUR Notebook, attention KU community, KU Idol is coming. The event is on Monday, April 27th at 7 p.m. in McFarland Student Union Building, Room 183. You can experience the fun for just $3, which goes to a local charity. They are also looking for people to participate. It is only $5 to take part in the show. Prizes for the winners are available, along with food for everyone. The event supports the Opportunity House in Reading. This message of community interest brought to you by the radio voice of Kutztown University, KUR. Without further ado, we'll hit the first break, 610 683 Four zero five eight, or facebook.com slash Tyler Warner show to talk all things Philadelphia Eagles, Philadelphia sports, and obviously Tim Tebow. Right here in the Tyler Warner show on Kutztown Radio. You're listening to the radio voice of Kutztown University, KUL. On the next episode of Recipes for Disaster. So we've got our neighbor Paul coming over tonight for a barbecue, which is why I prepared a delicious lemon rosemary steak marinade from my special collection of old family recipes. To make sure the steaks are extra, extra, extra tender, I left them marinating out on the counter overnight, just like Nana used to. Maria may mean well, but without food safety, it never ends well. Always thaw or marinate foods in the refrigerator at 40 degrees Fahrenheit or below. Or you could make your friends and family really sick. Maria's neighbor Paul didn't think twice about the steak he ate until he was presenting his company's financial forecast to the board. That's when a sudden bout of food poisoning made it explicitly clear that profits weren't the only thing on the rise. Watch Recipes for Disaster at foodsafety.gov. You'll learn the right steps as Maria does everything wrong. Brought to you by the USDA, HHS, and the Ad Council. It's 11.22 right here on this uh, busy, busy day on the Tyler Werner Show. Right here in Kutztown Radio. Obviously uh, headed by the signing of Tim Tebow the other day. On, uh, you know, again, for those who will joke... Happened to be 420. Um, I guess, you know, for whatever reason that holiday is in play, I, I don't know. But anyways, uh, that, that's that's the main headline for the day. We got, you know, got a lot of issues to talk about. And, and you know, I mean, I, obviously we're getting closer to the NFL draft. Obviously, but uh, 
you know, coming up, well, I guess a, a week from tomorrow, obviously going to be a, a huge draft for the Philadelphia Eagles, but I don't know. I feel like this week, I mean, the draft is a little overshadowed, or at least the, uh, you know, looking forward to the draft is a little bit overshadowed by, you know, some of the other things that have come out with the uh, Philadelphia sports scene in the past week. And again, that's, you know, it's it's kind of ironic, you know. I mean, for weeks we've been talking about, you know, will the Eagles, you know, what could they do to get Marcus Mariota? What might they do? And, of course, you know, Chip Kelly would kind of shoot that whole idea, ideology down of trying to move up in the draft and make some trade moves to move up and possibly get Marcus Mariota. you got nothing to talk about on sports radio. Let's talk about trades. Yeah. As he as he said last month when uh, it was media day with Chip Kelly, you know, I, again, I, I I find it kind of ironic how you know we're, we've been talking about mock draft. You know, Brian Bolden, you believe the, the other week ago um, how you know Marcus Mariota he he's he's going to slide the number twenty. The Eagles, if they want Marcus Mariota, they won't have to do anything to get him. And then in the week before that, it was uh, Todd McShay, think you know, predicting that the Tennessee Titans were going to grab Marcus Mariota um, at pick number two. And then last week, of course, it was Ron Jaworski and uh, was it Merrill Hodge on ESPN, and you know, kind of just like destroying the draft stock of well, I, I guess. Uh, at least to their, from their, pers- I, I guess, uh, perspective or whatever, uh, you, you know, kind of ripping Jameis Winston, who's obviously the the favorite to be the number one pick, you know, pretty universally across the board by most experts and people, NFL fans, whatever. And then, you know, the, and Ron Jaworski last week saying how he predicts that the Tampa Bay Buccaneers were going to, or are going to take Marcus Mariota instead of Jameis Winston at pick number one of the draft this year. You know, we, we had all, all these thoughts floating around, and now it's like overshadowed suddenly by a, a guy who at most is going to be a, you know, would be a, a third string quarterback on this team. And talk about irony there. But that's, you know, that's the, uh, that's the intrigue of Tim Tebow, I guess. The whole, you know, what surrounds him, and at least for now, I mean, we'll we'll, we'll see, you know, through as, as we proceed through training camp and preseason, it remains to be seen who the third string quarterback is on this team come week one of the NFL season when the Philadelphia Eagles take on the Atlanta Falcons. Obviously, for those who. Uh, who did not yet know that or see the Eagles' schedule, which will go down the board, you know, maybe a couple times later on in the show, and maybe, and who knows, maybe with uh, Matt Walsh joining the show, I, I, I passed by him on my way to the studio earlier. I know he's working on, uh, he, he's like the floor coordinator or something for the uh, Between the Lines on KUTV that'll air uh, later tonight, I believe, at eight o'clock on the KUTV channel. So he was kind of like in the lobby there waiting for the, the interview interviewees for the show today, and I, I kind of passed by him and, you know, said, you know, hey, maybe if you're not busy, come talk about Tim Tebow. I don't know if he heard me because he had some kind of headset on and, and uh, you know, talking to people in the studio. So we'll, we'll, we'll see if he makes an appearance. But nevertheless, we're going we're gonna to get into... A lot of issues today on the Tyler Werner show as we roll on through here. Now, I mentioned uh, Tim Tebow, and I, I guess my rant, if you want to call it rant, or just just thoughts. I mean, it, it wasn't, I mean, for those who, before I get into playing it here, for those who listened to the show, um, I, I believe it would have been, I don't know, April or uh, March 17th or 18th somewhere during that time it was like five weeks ago at this point you know I shared my thoughts in Tim Tebow and I you know I mean again I mean he's a great character guy and 
you know, I, I admire him for that and everything. But uh, as far as him having a place in this Philadelphia Eagles team, which is ultimately the main, the main focus here. I mean, I, again, I'll go to, I'll go to, you know, go to church with Tim Tebow any day, I guess, or you know, whatever, for lack of a better term. But th- this is what we're, you know, the, the Tyler Werner show. We're talking about the Philadelphia sports scene and how, what can the teams do to get better. We we deal with wins and losses here, and, and how, um, you know what what's going to contribute to more winning in this town? Because certainly, I mean, just just look at the Philadelphia Phillies. Um, you know, I mean, hey, I, I mean they I don't know for those they they won their second game last night in in the past nine games, I guess for the you know for those who were uh, you know. Enthused about the Philly season, beating the Miami Marlins, albeit. But other than that, I mean, the Flyers. I mean, they're kind of, you know, they miss the playoffs. Obviously, the Sixers, which maybe we'll have some Brett Brown thoughts um, about the team heading forward a little later in the show. Other than that, I mean, it's pretty much the Eagles, and what is going to contribute, you know, to wins and losses here. Because, I, I mean, right now, I mean, they're kind of, I don't know, they're kind of all we got, at least uh, coming up in the next year. So, let me, let me you know, before I get into, uh, I guess, my Tim Tebow thoughts now, which are not going to be, you know, they're, they're not going to be deviate too much from my original, I guess, premises, or I don't know what's the plural form of that word, uh, <laughs> of uh, what I basically voiced last month on the Tyler Warner show after Tim Tebow worked out for the Philadelphia Eagles. And, you know, people like myself didn't think much of it. So without further ado, let's play, uh, I guess, my, you know, little presentation, my Tim Tebow rant from last month right here in the Tyler Warner show. As the uh, computer, I, I guess the, the the question to be asked here, as far as the Philadelphia Eagles are concerned, is what place does Tim Tebow have here on, on the Philadelphia Eagles? It, it, it was, you know, supposedly it was worked out the other day. Um, you know, I'm sure. You know, once that news, I mean, there's, you know, obviously people hovering around the Novacare Center and everything, and. Yeah, I'm sure we had a, you know, a, a chopper and, you know, it essentially keeping you up to date on that and everything. Um, it, it was one of those kind of situations, I guess. Like, what does this mean? You know, are, are the Eagles interested in Tim Tebow? And, you know, I, I, I guess we'll wait and see if something is made out of this. I don't, but I don't think at the end of the day, uh, Tim Tebow is a place here on the Philadelphia Eagles. Um, you know, people are, again, and people are wondering, like, the possibility that, you know, oh, maybe, maybe they want to, they want to work him out. Maybe they want to put him at tight end, or maybe, maybe they want to bring him out, you know, on the field just to run the read option since they can't do that with Sam Bradford or Mark Sanchez or, you know, Matt Barkley. And, you know, people say like, oh, maybe they can, you know, at least people want to be optimistic they want to, you know, maybe they want to bring him on the team just so they, you know, run the read option. And I'm thinking, well, it kind of, it's kind of silly to do that if, you know, other teams pick on the fact, pick up on the fact that, all right, so they bring Tim Tebow out, that must mean they're probably going to run the read option, or the, or the chances are obviously very high that they're going to run the read option because they're not going to do it with Sam Bradford in there. That is, if you know, Sam Bradford is healthy, of course, and is not out with another torn ACL or something like that. But, you know, same with Mark Sanchez. They're not, you know, they're not going to do that with him. And so that kind of maybe defeats the purpose a little bit of that, obviously. So let's, let's throw that out. Um, you know, with all due respect to Tim Tebow, and, you know, he's a, you know, from all accounts, he's a great human being and everything. And people suggest that, you know, oh, maybe he can come here and be a good, you know, at least be a good mentor or whatever. And, and I'm thinking, like, 
Why do you, you know, you sign, why would you sign a guy to be like a third string quarterback, essentially, and, you know, to, I guess, be a role model or a mentor or whatever? It's, it's like, I, I don't understand that. If you get, if you get the, get the franchise quarterback, which supposedly, uh, potentially they're, they're thinking Sam Bradford is, I don't know about that. I mean, again, I'm, I'm not ruling out the idea that maybe somebody later on in the draft is interested in Sam Bradford, and I, I don't, you know, maybe they want to, you know, there's some kind of behind-the-scenes thing here, and, you know, Chip Kelly's kind of just lying about it or something. I'm not ruling that possibility out, but, I, you know, I, you don't need to... If you get the franchise quarterback and whatever, I mean, you don't need... What do you need a, a, a third-string quarterback in your roster for as, as a mentor? I, I I don't understand that. Do you think when, like, I don't know, like New England, for instance, when they brought him, do you think Bill Belichick thought, like, hmm, well, maybe we can, you know, make this guy a mentor or whatever? This is I, the end of this subject for me yeah, I, for a long time. I don't think I don't think that was the thought process. I thought, you know, I I, I would think, if anything, it's... I guess some kind of X's and O's deal. Like, can do we have any use for this guy? And New England didn't. And I'm sorry, I don't really know what use you have on the Eagles for Tim Tebow. The, the, the guy just can't can't throw in this league. And you know, I I say how it's important to have mobility, like Marcus, like I've been saying about Marcus Mariota, pocket mobility first and foremost. And it's nice if you can get out of the pocket, make a play with you know, your legs with four or five speed and then slide, get out of bounds or whatever to not take a brutal hit. I mean, that's that's great to have and everything, but first and foremost, you got to be able to throw the ball. It's a passing league. So there you go. That was, uh, you know, the essence of what I had to say last month when Tim Tebow was given a workout and when Obviously, rumors started swirling, excitement started swirling in the air that, oh, you know, positive and negative, I guess, uh, thoughts swirling in the air. Because, you know, Tim Tebow's a very polarizing guy. But, it, you know, that, those were my thoughts, and nothing's really changed here. Again, I mean, at the end, of, I mean, what's going to contribute to wins and losses here? That's the. I mean, there's the whole thing with, you know, and it, it it bleeds into other, uh, you know, I guess sports teams like the Flyers, for instance. When, you know, I, I'm concerned. You know, I want them to. It, it's it's time they win a Stanley Cup, since it's been 40 years now. And you know, some fans, you know, they're happy. You know, they were happy. All oh, the Flyers, they spoiled, uh, well, they didn't spoil the Penguins, ultimately the Pittsburgh Penguins uh, shot at making the playoffs or their playoff run or whatever, because the Penguins did make it in, but, you know, they, they, oh, they finished the season, they beat the Penguins twice at the end of the year, they beat them on Easter Sunday, you know, woohoo, I mean, that's, that's, that's all, you know, fans were happy about that and everything, you know, it's... Celebrate, I guess. Philadelphia style or whatever. Philadelphia Flyer fan style or whatever. I, but at the end of the day, it's you know I'm I'm not I, I'm I'm not satisfied with that. I don't I don't care because ultimately the Flyers didn't make the playoffs. They took a step back, and it's about time they do more to you know maybe they get some kind of fresh perspectives and in there or whatever and. I, I, I don't, you know, a, a, com, a combobulation of things, I guess, if that, if that is a word. Uh, but anyways, it, it's, you know, th- win, what contributes to wins and losses here? Not, you know, what's, uh, you know, I, I don't really believe in moral victories or anything here. You know, I, I don't believe in the idea that you have to, you know, that that you can just bring a third string, you know, guy who's, I, I guess, a third string caliber caliber quarterback many would argue not even that at this point you know what would, what's the sense of bring, you need a third string quarterback or a guy who's gonna you know run a read option play a couple times a game or 
help you out on third and short or something like that, or fourth and short, who is a uh, very classy guy to be an on-field leader. I mean, it's – is that what you – like, I know <laughs> – I know we could talk about uh, we could bring up the whole angle of the uh, Chip Kelly culture that could fit, you know that could go all sorts of different directions in here, in factoring in this decision, and we could joke about that till the cows come home. But I, I know like some people say, you know, what's the you know what's the harm in this? And at the end of the day, I think you know what's the point. Now I I mentioned in this that rant that I played a few minutes ago. Um, I, I, I even meant, you know, I even mentioned it before any of this signing even took place. And the, the people were thinking, Oh, maybe they can, maybe they're working them out. Maybe they can use them in, you know, some read option plays or, you know, if you, you know, as a third string quarterback or whatever. And well, if you, well, first of all, if you're going to bring them in for a few re option plays, and I, I mean, you know, to be, stay consistent here and, uh, to echo what I said last month, you're defeating the purpose. I mean, if you're you're bringing Tim Tebow in there for a few plays a game like that, say it's a third and short situation, you know, stuff like that, aren't opposing teams' defenses going to pick up on the fact, like, oh, hey, well, they just brought Tim Tebow out here. We know they're not, uh, you know, we know they're not going to try to throw a, a, a you know, a deep pass or a, even a medium pass here, you know, it really condenses the possibility that, you know, as far as what the, the opposing team's defense has got to be thinking. I mean, it's, it's, you know, you're putting a big target on your back there. If that's what you're going to do, see the advantage of having, you know, I guess the ideal quarterback or the prototypical quarterback, the franchise quarterback, a la, you know, Marcus Mariota, obviously that continues to, be the hopes and dreams for many, I guess, Eagles fans. The, the point is that he can line up every down, whatever the situation is, and, you know, maybe you don't know what they're going to do. They can line up in shotgun. They could, who knows, they could be do it. They could run the re- read option. They could also run a, a, you know, they could do a pass play off of a read option. Tim Tebow, I, you can't, because he can't really throw well at all that you know he doesn't have the requisite throwing abilities that you need in the NFL to succeed really and be a, you know even be a third string quarterback for that matter but if you're going to bring your third string if you have to bring your third string quarterback out normally uh your season's shot anyways but the idea is that you have Marcus Mario you have the prototypical franchise quarterback or whatever. I, I don't know. Maybe, you know, again, maybe Chip Kelly thinks Sam Bradford's this guy, although he doesn't have the as as much mobility as I would have thought he'd be looking for in a quarterback. You want, you know, you want to be able to have a, a quarterback that you can count on that can run any play. Not this thing where we're going to bring out this guy who's really limited as a quarterback throw, you know, slash thrower. So we're going to bring him out in a wildcat situation or, a you know, a goal line situation, and you're just asking for the opposing team's defense to pick up on what's going on here. This is the NFL. And we'll get into more of, of, you know, this NFL talk and this Philadelphia Eagles and Tim Tebow discussion on the other side because we have to hit another break. 610-683-4058 or facebook.com slash Tyler Werner Show. To share your thoughts on what's transpiring with you know Tim Tebow and and you know all, all things Eagles right now because we got we got some other you know I guess juicy topics I guess if you want to I don't know get into something that, you know if you want to have some kind of I don't know nerdy reference there or something it was like sweet and sour pork right we'll get in on those topics on the other side. And into the second half of the Tyler Werner show. 610-683-4058. We'll be right back after this. ThePeopleChronicles.com is a community storytelling project out of Berks County. Uplifting, challenging, moving stories. Everyday people sharing their lives, their stories with all of us. If you are looking to be inspired and you want to share your story, find us today at ThePeopleChronicles.com. 
And you can hear the People Chronicles every Thursday at 11.30 a.m. here on the Radio Voice KUR. This is Officer Reese from Reading Police Department. If you have your wipers on due to inclement weather, you must turn on your headlights. If you don't follow this law, you could be fined. So remember, wipers on, headlights on. It's the law. To learn more about traffic safety, visit JustDrivePA.com. Brought to you by PennDOT and this station. It is 11.44 on the Tyler Warner Show on Kutztown Radio. Getting down to the uh, we're getting down to the final few broadcasts, at least for me, right here in Kutztown Radio on the, the show. Considering I mean I, you know, be walking in May just a few just a few short weeks um, to graduate and hopefully go on to uh, do an internship. It's looking like well, waiting to hear back. Um, you know, Professor Cotelis is doing a good job, you know, trying to get in contact um, with uh, one of the heads of, you know, hiring interns and everything um, at, at uh, WMMR 93.3 and uh, also uh, WIP, perhaps. So, you know, there's kind of just waiting to hear, you know, I guess for them to catch up with, you know, this whole intern thing and everything and hiring interns and well even just interviewing interns so uh you, you know but yeah we're, we're getting down to the the end of the semester here this is the i guess the third to last broadcast we got next week and the week after and we got someone on the phone lines so without further ado let's uh let's put them on let's see who it is hello yes you're on Kutztown radio Yes, Tyler, this is uh, Batman Wayne checking in. Oh, yes, it is. Oh, man, I, sh- I should have had my uh, my my uh, theme music, my, th- you know, my, uh, I, I don't know, was it, Batman, Batman 666 uh, ready to go for you. Yes, 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 I know. I probably should have sent you a message earlier, but... Uh, That's all right. But uh, nevertheless... I'm back in the job interview with Lowe, so... What's that? You got a job interview? Yeah, yeah, at Lowe's, so... Potential summer work probably for me, but... So... So I, I, just, I just figured I'd call in because I figured you were talking about Tim Tebow and all that. Yes. So, uh, still there, Tyler? Yes, I'm still there. Oh, okay. Sorry, I'm sorry, calling from my cell phone right now because I don't know how good the signal is going to be. Are you, are you at uh, home over in uh, Bricknock Township? Yes, I just got home. Yes, where I'm, uh, yeah, I, I know the service can be uh, you know, a little shoddy out there in the middle of nowhere. Yes, yeah, yes, it can be. Um... Yeah, yeah, yes, yeah, I, I agree. The service can be very lousy, uh, lousy in Brecknock Township. <laughs> so, anyways, yes. So, I, I mean, what what can we not talk about this off season with the Eagles? Pretty much. Yeah, ex- exactly right. We mentioned it earlier. You know, it's like what, just what you think it could get. You know, it, it couldn't get any more. I don't know, intriguing or awkward. The Eagles signed Tim Tebow on four twenty of all days. Like you. Yes, yes. Like you joked about. <laughs> yes, yes, I, I did joke about that. Um, I mean, still there? Yes. Yeah, okay, we got I, you. I keep, keep, keep hearing, hearing uh, I, I, I keep, keep hearing like some noise in the background, but but probably nothing. I, 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 look, I, 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 I'm trying to like stay calm when talking about Tim Tebow there, but I, let's see, trying to come to words here. I mean, for me, I think this is this is all with this whole uh, Chip Kelly culture deal, pretty much. Yeah, I mean, I, I kind of hinted at that too. I mean, it's a bun- It could be a bunch of things. Well, no, I mean, I, I, I guess the best example here. I mean, what, what, what's again? You and me were not at this private workout where Tim was working out and supposedly improving on his new throwing motion that you know that everybody keeps talking about uh, him having. So I, I've no idea what, what Chip saw saw here, but. I, I mean, I would say you can at least slot him in at the, at the, at the, as a third-string quarterback. I think Barkley's done with the Eagles. I mean, I, I don't know why why why, why everybody would assume Barkley's like going to compete with Tim. I think he's. I think Matt's out. Yeah, it's kind of a uh, I agree. one of those draft picks too. Like you know, so they drafted Matt Barkley and it never never panned out here. He's been no, two no, years. I mean, well, <laughs> Well, well I, I mean, I, I know that Matt had, like, that uh, shoulder problem at, at USC. And there, there was a debate 
about whether whether the, the, the injury was going to impact him potentially in the NFL and going forward. Yes, and it's been two years now, and he's yes. still you know still can't play. So, so yeah, I mean, I guess, I guess it's part of that. And well, uh, I'm not. I mean, I mean, the funniest thing is that the, the, that the whole fact the Eagles tried to trade him too. I mean. I mean, yeah. the guy's hardly seen any any field time, so I I, mean, I don't know why they would assume a team would just want to get him. I mean, I mean, I, there was there was a story that came out that, that the Dolphins had interest in him, but apparently they went with Josh Freeman over Matt Barkley. So I I, I think the guy's career might be over, honestly. Right. Yeah, and, and there were people, you know, people were clamoring like that last game of the season against the Giants that essentially didn't mean anything. Like, you know, why don't they bring out Matt Barkley here and you know, never, never saw. I mean, him. I mean, you know, I mean, because I mean, the game didn't mean anything at the end of the day, and. You might at least maybe if you're going to trade Barkley, you must at least entice some teams by sh- showing what this kid can do in that. Yeah, I mean, they never did. And like I said, I, I, I mean, going back I guess, to the Tim Tebow thing is, look, I mean, I think Chip really does believe that he that he can he can find something for Tim on this team. Yeah, like like other guys, I guess that he yeah, that he no, signs I mean, at like, times. <laughs> I guess the best example is Mark Sanchez. I mean, if you. If you think about it, I think Mark 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 flew his highest uh, passing percentage on, on his offense with Philadelphia. Yeah, that's true. Well, well no, I mean, cause I, what, what was his like highest percentage at the Jets? Was it like like fifty five percent passing rating possibly? And in his nine games at Philadelphia, I think he flew like sixty five percent passer rating. Yeah, and he was almost a uh, you know. For every touchdown he threw, throws an interception as well. Yeah. You know, kind it, was, of it wasn't a great stat, but it was his best stat, stat as a quarterback in the league. Right. So, so I mean, what was Tim's rating? Like a, 40, a 49% for Denver that one year? Yeah, I think like his – I'd have to look it up, but I, I'm, I'm not – I think his like career NFL uh, throwing percent, completion percentage is like 47% or something. It, it's – yeah. It's sub-50%. And, and, and his QBR is, like, in the 30s. I mean, his QBR is in the thir- low 30s, too. Yeah. yeah. So, I, I, like I said, I, I have no idea. I mean, I guess the question could be is, do you think this is the end of the, the Mariota trade talk, probably? Because they got five quarterbacks on the roster now. Yeah, it's beginning to, uh, yeah, I mean, it, it's beginning to look like a, you know, become a full house situation here, I guess, to, you know, shout out the uh, full house reunion that's coming back. Yes, but, I uh, heard about that. I heard Netflix was doing that. <laughs> but yeah, but but yeah, I mean, obviously, yeah, I, I would think, you know, Matt Barkley is probably on his way out here, and then you know, then you got like G.J. Kenny, who's like the pra- you know practice well, yeah, squad yeah. guy. I, I, I think I think Kenny's gonna be the, the the practice squad quarterback. Yeah, I think we can lock that him in there. Yeah, and, and like I said, I think I think the Tim Tebow talk has really got high in Philadelphia just because of who the first two string quarterbacks are in front of him. Yeah, I mean, there's still no guarantee. I mean, no one really knows when Sam Bradford's going to hit the field or not. Right. And if he does hit the field, if, uh, you know, if somebody hits him and then he's, you know, lo and behold, he's out for another season or something like that. Hopefully not. Yeah, but Yeah, I mean, and like I said, I I, I, I mean, I'm sure you're going to talk about the, the, Mathis, the Mathis deal and the Kendricks deal, but I, I, I'm really not liking our offensive line if Mathis, if Mathis is gone now as well because we also want Harriman. So the, I mean, that's just more depth that, that this team lost in, in, a, in a pretty big position. Yes, definitely. We'll get into that. I guess uh, probably on the other side of the uh, well, the second hour of the Tyler Warner show. Yeah, we'll definitely get into that as well. Okay. I mean, I, I, I guess we can just wrap it up by uh, by uh, I guess we will give my quick predictions of the, of the schedule. I mean, Grant, this is based on not what the team's doing in the draft and not what right. in the quarterback situation. Just right on. now, yeah. I, I, honestly, I'm, I'm going to give this team maybe nine, eight wins. Nine or eight? Yeah, and actually, that, that's very high because uh, I, I actually looked on a nine, seven point five of the Fanatics uh, poll. Yes, I, I saw the same thing this morning. Go ahead. Yeah, yes, and and they I, did you see the, how much how much uh, the seven to a less win? I was, was I was I I, I, I was flabbergasted. By. Like eighty three percent. Eighty-three, yes, yeah, seven wins or less. Like I, I got to like I mean, question: Is somebody did somebody like spam it or something? And I, I, I have no, I have no <laughs> idea. I I don't know I don't know either. Because like, like I said, because I, 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 I think eight, I don't I don't think eight and nine is that big big of an exaggeration for this team here. But I, I, seven or less, I mean that's that they must really think this team's going going to go downhill next year. Yeah, I I have I have no idea. Like that really shocked me as well. Okay. Yep. Yeah, well, well, thanks for having me call. Yep. Yeah, thanks for checking in, Batman Wayne. That ha- def- definitely uh, brought a, a new uh, dimension to the show here. 
And uh, I guess good luck with uh, with Lowe's. Yep, thank you. Yep. Thank you. Yep, see ya. All right, thanks. All right, so there we go. That was uh, Batman Wayne checking in on the show from, uh, you know, down, you know, within a, a couple miles of my homeland down in Brecknock Township. It was nice to, uh, nice to have him on the show, talking some Tim Tebow talking, you know, trying to, you know, I guess be, you know, be open-minded about them bringing Tim Tebow here. And again, maybe we'll, you know, I'm, my hopes are that Matt Walsh, you know, I got to, you know, Matt Walsh, he isn't, I, he, I mean, he's not obligated to appear on the show, but uh, it, it's always nice to have him pop on if he wants to. And, you know, he missed in the last couple of weeks, but you never know. You can just, <laughs> you just pop in at any moment to talk some Tim Tebow here and, you know, the circus that is coming to town here with Tim Tebow, I guess, to, to some extent, if you want to, yeah, you know. That whole uh, media circus analogy and everything. And, you know, speaking of, you know, I, I kind of joked to, to open the show, you know, speaking of circuses and stuff like that, I, I, I joke, you know, I'm not, I'm not referring to Bear Fest 37 that's, uh, you know, going on here at, at the campus. But, uh, you know, I figured, you know, I'm going to be, I'm going to be involved in that a little bit tomorrow, actually. You know, they got a music fest going, um, you know, people of the school, play, you know, playing some music. Um, over at the DMZ, for those who aren't aware, uh, for those who are, you know, maybe passing by one of the TVs in, uh, you know, one of the buildings here, you know, like the McFarland Student Union building or or whatever around here at the uh, fine campus of Kutztown University. Um, I, I have a, like, a little flyer here um, for Bear Fest. Um, it, you know, it's, the tagline is, we're with the band, and it, you know, it's kind of musically focused, but... Uh, since you know this is kind of a cool deal here, I guess you could say I'll give a little uh, a little layout of what's to come, um, f- beginning today, through Saturday. So today, um, from four to eight thirty p.m. at the DMZ, everybody's raving about Bear Fest. Let's say we're gonna have a a kickoff cookout with a live music trivia show, plus photos, body art. Dance, dance, revolution, music, laser tag, and more. That's that's coming up today, and I guess uh, you know these things. You know, a lot of outdoor stuff here. We've got a, cl- I guess like a cloudy, overcast day, but I, I don't think we're supposed to get. I, I don't know if we're getting any rain or not. I guess, uh, but I know a lot of this uh, stuff is weather. As long as there's no lightning or anything, we should be fine. And it looks like we're gonna have some. Uh, you know, cloudy or sunny weather for the most part. Uh, I, I don't know. I'm, I'm looking. We might have some rain later, but I know. Uh, I know at least for the music fest tomorrow, um, it's rain or shine. They have a tent and everything. So, so uh, on to that. You know, Thursday then tomorrow is the music fest at Bear Fest at, over at the DMZ. I'll be I'll be there. Uh, er, well, early on. It, it's it starts. I guess 2.30 and, you know, kicks off at 3 p.m. as far as the, uh, you know, music goes. Um, plus, I, I, I find this interest, I, you know, there's going to be a, uh, the infamous pudding slides. What a whoopie pie or fun slide. Yeah, I, <laughs> you know, I, I, I guess, you know, I don't know, it's going to be like chocolate pudding or what, I, I have no idea, but I know one thing, it's going to be, uh, Tomorrow it's going to be the high is like fifty. I'm reading, so uh, I don't know. It's it might be a little uh, chilly. You know, it's going to be cloudy and fifty, so it might be a little. Uh, I don't know, chilly. It might be. You got to be pretty daring, I guess, to. Uh, if that's, I don't know to go down a pudding slide or whatever. Not only that, then you got to hose off. Uh, you know, if you're going to go anywhere else and and whatever, but. Uh, I don't know. I'm, I'm interested in seeing, I guess, how that's going to work, considering the uh, the weather circumstance tomorrow. I mean, we, you know, you you go back to Saturday and we had 80 degree s- sunny weather. That, you know, maybe that's a different story. But you know, five days later here, we're dropping down to a high of 50 degrees. And I don't, you know, I don't know how that's going to work. Um. And plus, there's going to be a bungee bull and a uh, a pitch perfect movie and more 
not entirely. I'm not entirely sure about you know what all this stuff is um, about exactly, but nevertheless, I figure I'll you know I'll bring it to the attention here. Friday, April twenty fourth, six to ten p.m. Uh, set the cards on shuffle. It's gonna be like a ca- you know casino night games and bingo with great prizes, um, flip book photos, music, food, and more. At um, SDH upstairs, the South Dining Hall. I guess that stands for. I'm not always too up to speed with uh, acronyms because I don't I don't really use them too much. So I had to uh, think about what that might stand for as far as buildings here and. I guess it would be the South Dining Hall, you know, a place that I'm never really at considering I'm a commuter. And then Saturday, um, April 25th, 11 a.m. to 4 p.m. on the DMZ. Uh, please don't stop, stop the music with uh, two F's in there before the P. The tradition Bearfest Carnival, petting zoo, inflatable rides, best of KU performances, Plus booths sponsored by KU clubs, games, music, and more. This is all sponsored by Residence Hall Association, funded through SGA Housing, Residence Life, ACE, Alumni Engagement, Multicultural Center, and of course, KUR. And I know uh, I've got a couple of, you know, uh, I don't know, higher ups in, I guess, KUR um, students who have a... uh, you know, a, an important role with the station, you know, assistant president wise and whatever else that are going to be helping with the music fest tomorrow. So, you know, it's kind of a, you know, cool thing going on as we wind down the semester here uh, at, at Kutztown University. And, uh, you know, essentially my tenure on, on Kutztown radio. Oh, no! But, uh, but well, you know, nevertheless, we'll, we'll carry on. Um, well, on the other side, we'll do the call out of the week uh, because, you know, we had some, you know, we had Batman Wayne check in on the show and I figured we'll, uh, we'll save, we'll save the, the calling out of the week and some other things for the other side. But from the KUR notebook, before we hit halftime on the Tyler Werner show, attention KU community, get your rear in gear Saturday, June 13th. At Grange Park in Allentown. It's an effort to raise funds for colon cancer awareness. For more information, go to www.coloncancercoalition.org slash tour de tush. That's www.coloncancercoalition.org slash tour de tush. This message of community interest brought to you by the Radio Voice of Kutztown University, KUR. That was uh, I don't know, a bit of a... That one threw me off there. I wasn't ready for, for that one. But nevertheless, it, it's halftime on the Tyler Werner Show. Stay with us. 610-683-4058 or facebook.com slash Tyler Werner Show. We'll have more on the other side right here on Kutztown Radio. KUR Kutztown. KUR, the radio voice of Kutztown University, playing 1670 AM, streaming online at KUR.KutzTown.edu. At select times of the day on Service Electric Burks Channel 24, Hometown Utilicom Channel 28, and Service Electric Lehigh Channel 266. You can listen in on your smartphone by using a free app like TuneIn, or on any phone simply by dialing 610 465 7860 Listen to Kutztown University Radio. Yeah. Just like Metallica. Yeah. KUR can also be heard in select campus buildings like the MSU, Rickenbach, Stratton, Rec Center, and Keystone at 88.3 FM. Nominated for Best College Radio Station at an institution with under 10,000 enrollment and winner of Best Use of Social Media, your news leader in northeastern Berks County, KUR Kutztown. News, news, time for news. The KUR News Time is the top of the hour. I'm Mike Regensberger. 
The KU Student Government Board had their elections on Tuesday for the 2015-16 academic year, and incumbent President Joe Scaboria has been re-elected to a second term as president of the student body here at KU. Other results for other offices were Kelsey Greth as vice president, Sierra Lynch as parliamentarian, and Alyssa Blasco as secretary. Congratulations to the 2015-16 KU Student Government Board. Checking KUR Sports, registration is now available for the annual Joshua Westner Memorial Golf Tournament Sunday, September 27th at the Willow Hollow Golf Court in Leesport. The tournament will start at 8 a.m. and it's $150 per two-person team and $75 for an individual. The entry fee includes cart, lunch buffet, beverages, and prizes. The tournament is named after Josh, the son of former KU field hockey coach Betty Westner. Josh died in 2000 after a battle with Hodgkin's disease. He was 23 years old. All profits from this tournament are donated to the scholarship funds for the field hockey programs at KU and Exeter High School. Anyone wishing to be a sponsor should do so by making a donation. If you are interested in donating prizes or have any questions regarding the tournament, contact Betty Westner at 610-207-3593. That's 610-207-3593. And more details on this can be found at KUBears.com. Monsoon Mike says it's late April, but the temperature is going to feel more like late March for the foreseeable future. 761 presents the old school hip hop jam featuring Rob Bass, Biz Marky, Naughty by Nature, and Salt and Pepper. Friday, April 24th at Santander Arena. Tickets on sale now at the VF Outlet Box Office. All Ticketmaster outlets charge by phone at 800-745-3000 and online at Ticketmaster.com. The Old School Hip Hop Jam. Friday, April 24th at Santander Arena. From the KUR Notebook, notice is hereby given that KU intends to review the updated draft of the University Hazard Mitigation Plan and receive public comment at a meeting to be held on Thursday, April 23rd from 11 a.m. to noon. The meeting will be held in the BAME Science Center, room 145 at the KU campus located near Schaefer Lane in Kutztown, Pennsylvania. For persons with disabilities, please contact Stephen Helms, Director of University Environmental Health and Safety, at 610-683-4050 to discuss accommodations. The draft hazard mitigation plan can be accessed by going to KutztownUniversityHMP.com. That's KutztownUniversityHMP.com. For late-breaking news, weather, sports, and traffic, sometimes before we can even get it live on the air, make sure you like our award-winning Kutztown University Radio Facebook page or on Twitter at at KU Radio. From KUR News, I'm Mike Regensberger. Any views or opinions expressed on KUR are not necessarily those of Kutztown University. Kutztown University Student Government, Kutztown University Student Services Incorporated, KUR staff and management or other affiliated organizations. Twelve oh six, right here in this late April edition of the Tyler Werner Show. We're getting down to the end of the semester here. Only got a few weeks left. At least, well, a few editions of the Tyler Werner Show left. Um, after today, we just got next week to really, I guess, preview the NFL draft and what may happen regarding the Philadelphia Eagles with it. Um, I'm sure probably have more to talk about with Tim Tebow, of course. Obviously, given his, you know, the acquisition of him this past week. Just talked a little bit of that with Batman Wayne checking in um and, and, and fortunately uh unlike i believe it was the spring break edition of the tyler werner show where we may have perhaps had a uh, have had a uh, a prank call or a, I, I i can confirm that batman wayne is uh is well is not a prank caller and obviously he didn't pretend to be uh i don't know an elderly lady in in their 90s or anything like that so we can confirm that was an authentic call that we were able to uh, have today on the Tyler Werner Show. Let's go to the fault. And yes, if you want to, if you want to come in and join the Tyler Werner Show, talk Tim Tebow here, the acquisition of him, and what it may mean for the Eagles and other things that are going on in the Philadelphia sports scene. The number is six one zero six eight three four zero five eight. Now, I, I guess getting into other territory a little bit. Coach Craig Berube was fired by the Philadelphia. Well. Ron Hextall, Philadelphia Flyers last week, which, uh, you know, most Flyer fans, I, 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 you know, at least some that I know, uh, Mitch Lambert, 
who's obviously an, an avid Flyers fan, used to join us on the show when the Flyers were actually still relevant this season. He, uh, he, I know he was. Uh, he seemed pretty happy that Coach Craig Brewery was gone, and just the general, I, the general feeling is that you know most Flyer fans were happy that he was gone, and that as the coach, he will not be missed by the uh, the Flyers fan base. Get out! Yeah. So. Get out! Um, now, but the thing was initially what I didn't totally get. I, now I know Ron Hextall and. Craig Berube, they were, you know, being in the Flyers, I guess, community here and, and everything together through the years. You know, they were f- kind of friends and everything, and I, you know, I can understand that. And that's one of the th- things where you have, when you have, flyer, you know, ex-former Flyer players or whatever coaching the team in the front office and making moves like that's I guess one of the things that factor into it being a you know a per, you know nothing personal kind of thing and everything but you know initially when the season was over Ron Hextall like last week uh, when it was Wednesday after the Tyler Warner show initially he's, you know we're gonna I'm gonna take you know take some time and make this decision and it's like you don't really need to take time and make this decision and stuff like that you know it's like when uh, Andy Reid was fired a few years ago, I mean, it, and you know Jeffrey Lurie. I mean, I've said enough about him and owning this team, the Philadelphia Eagles team. But the, the, didn't you know the fourteen year connection that they had? I mean, there didn't need to be any, um, I, I guess, thought process there. It was all right. The next day, you know, we know what the deal is here. I mean, I I, I would argue that maybe you could have fired Reid a little sooner to kind of put every, everyone in the locker room on notice um, for the remainder of the season that, you know, hey, like, w- w- you know, we're, we're moving on here. We're not, you know, take no prisoners here. But, no, you know, nevertheless, uh, Lori let Andy Reid finish out his tenure. And then um, the day afterwards, it was pretty much, all right, you know, we're moving on. And time that's, uh, yeah, <laughs> that's the, the bottom line. There was no, you know, we need to take time to think about this and, and it, no, it was. We have a. We got to get a new. You know, we got to have a new direction here. And I, I didn't totally understand that with, um, you know, the delay. I guess of a few days here and and whatnot. But nevertheless, Craig Berube is out. Um, and, and it, it brings to definitely like calls into question. Like, you know, so who, uh, you know, what ex flyer coaches this team next? <laughs> Uh, but no, no, I mean, no, the, the real question, you know, what are the, I guess, possibilities? I mean, there's a lot of possibilities out there. And uh, there's a remote one that I'm actually going to bring up in the, uh, just to foreshadow, in, in the MVP of the week segment a little later for some of the things he had to say uh, last week on a particular radio show. Um but there's, you know, there's options out there, certainly, for the Flyers. Um, and, you know, I'm trying to, uh, I, I was trying to, like, look here at, at a, a possible list um, of options here. The favorites, at least according to this article I have from NJ.com. Best bets. One of them being the San Jose Sharks head coach, Todd McClellan, who, you know, for the... For those, it would not be a surprise if he if he's fired or if he leaves the organization soon. But for those, you know, the San Jose Sharks head coach, the past several seasons, um, who has a pretty impressive record, I might add. Obviously, um, it didn't. Maybe it didn't result in any cups, but you know, certainly, you know, there might be some, you know, potential. I mean, he's a good head coach. Obviously, and you know, there's a down season for the Sharks this year, certainly. But they did have some pretty darn solid years, certainly. Um, yeah, I mean, he led the Sharks to the six seasons of playoffs in a row before missing them this year, which you know, kind of a bit of a surprise there. But, but uh, you know, so we'll see. I mean, in hockey, coaches the chopping block is kind of, you know. It, it, coaches get fired pretty easily sometimes. 
So, you know, I mean, just look at Craig Berube. I mean, not not that I disagree with it or, or whatsoever, but, you know, he had that one season where they, you know, last year where he, after the third game he was the coach and Flyers went to the playoffs this year, doesn't get the job done, doesn't make the playoffs, and he's out. You know, that's, that, that's the, I guess, the short leash there that you have. Another option, Kevin Deneen, an assistant co- coach from the Chicago Blackhawks. You know, maybe a guy who uh, wants to, you know, maybe move up in the world a little bit. Um, you know, being a head coach from a, obviously, one of the premier NHL franchises of the last several years. John Stevens. Los Angeles Kings assistant head coach. Again, another maybe wants to move up and he he actually he actually coached the Flyers previously for the the, the majority of the 2006 to 2007 season and then 25 games through tw- into the 2009 to 2010 season ironically. But the thing is, I mean, is a you know the connection there I mean he was already a coach you know do you want to go back I don't know but nevertheless I mean he went to the Los Angeles Kings has been an assistant coach and you know helped contribute obviously to two Stanley Cups and certainly Ron Hextall was had an assistant front office position of course over in LA as well during that time so you know they brought him a you know another another former flyer connection there but nevertheless I mean I guess it's an option and uh, Pete DeBoer, who uh, is, you know, close to a 500 record if you factor in overtime losses um, as far as NFL head coaching experience uh, with the Florida Panthers and the New Jersey Devils. So he's, I, I don't know, maybe, uh, you know, he's, I, I guess being on those teams, he hasn't had, you know, extremely talented rosters to work with. But, uh, you know, so I, I don't know what the... Uh, the thoughts are there, but those are some possibilities, and we'll get into some more. Well, a I I mean probably a, a very unlikely possibility, but uh, if if it did happen, if a certain guy was hired, I'd I'd be pretty intrigued. Well, we'll get into that later. But now, as we move forward here, let's let's get into the Tyler Werner show call out of the week. It's time for Tyler Werner's call out of the week. Somebody owes us an explanation, that's all. What's the matter with you? Loser! You're a loser! Are you kidding me? Well, I have a microphone, and you don't. So you will listen to every word I have to say! And this week, I, you know, I, I, I've been able to explain, or at least provide some kind of explanation, or some kind of theory, for a lot of what the Eagles, um, slash Chip Kelly have done in this offseason so far. But, I mean, overall, I mean, with the whole Tim Tebow signing and with some sources of some absentees for the voluntary workouts that are uh, beginning shortly, or or they've actually the spring workouts that began Monday, I, I, I'm beginning, you know, I'm questioning some things that are going on with the Philadelphia Eagles right now and questioning Chip Kelly and calling out some you know just the the whole culture angle of this and maybe normally I you know again I've throughout the the semester I've I've been able to provide some logical theories I well I I I think they're logical I don't you know you want to debate them on the debate me on that I mean Call in the show, 610-683-4058, but, or Facebook.com slash Tyler Werner Show. You know, from the whole thing with the running backs exchange, you know, replacing of LaShawn McCoy and stuff like that. The Sam Bradford idea, I mean, I'm still scra- I'm scratching my head a little bit on that one. Um, and, of course, you know, get rid- getting rid of Nick Foles in there as, as well. Um, but I, you know, so I, I, I question that, but I, I guess I'm still wait. You know, I guess we still got to wait until the NFL draft because you never know with Chip Kelly, you never know what's up his sleeve these days. And it, 
with the signing of Tim Tebow, I mean, it kind of just goes to show you that. And I'd like to mention, for those who don't remember, or for those who don't know, or in 2011, when Chip Kelly was still coaching Oregon, of course, Chip Kelly was quoted as saying, we're not interested in the Tim Tebow-type quarterbacks or whatever. So, you know, this, 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 there's some hypo, hypocriticism in, that I have in this whole signing of Tim Tebow and the fact that, again, I mean, you know, maybe, I don't know, maybe he's going to see more in, in Tim Tebow, maybe right when he worked him out and whatever, maybe he sees more in him than he does in Matt Barkley. And again, you drafted Matt Barkley, and so you're going to tell me now that's a wasted draft pick? You know, then you took Matt Barkley in that draft, you know, could you have, who knows? Maybe you could have found a, a diamond in the rough, you know, look at this, what the Seahawks do sometimes, you know, when they they get guys like Cam Chancellor and, uh, you know, Richard Sherman later in the NFL draft. Instead, instead, you know, we never, you get to have like a wasted pick like that of Matt Barkley and, you know, never pan out or whatever. I, I don't know. But, and again, it's the whole idea with Tim Tebow. I mean, it continues to be a, uh, it'll, con- I'm sure next week it'll also bleed into, uh, as the conversations continue to circulate about Tim Tebow, continue to circulate. But, and I'll get into this more on the other side as well. But uh, for those who don't know, now, Evan Mathis, Chris Polk, there, there's been trade rumors about Evan Mathis, I know, um, you know, dating back to a few months ago, before free agency even. Um, and Chris Polk, I mean, once once the Eagles got DeMarco Murray and Ryan Matthews, and they still have Darren Sproles in the roster, of course, um, who I don't think, you know, they're going to get rid of, obviously. They got, you know, it's, that was a, obviously one of Chip's uh, main acquisitions last offseason, you know, you start to wonder if Chris Polk is an odd man out here, given that they have an overabundance of running backs right now. So Chris, these guys were missing from offseason workouts. Again, Mathis, you know, there's trade rumors, who knows. But Michael Kendricks was also missing from the workouts. And it just it makes me, you know... Begin to question here. You know they brought. I mean, I mean for the Lashawn McCoy trade, they brought Ke- essentially Kiko Alonso, of course, another Oregon Duck over here. And it makes you wonder with Chip Kelly, you know, Michael Kendrick. Now they got, you know, they're gonna they're bringing back D'Amico Ryan's. They extended him as well. So now uh, it appears that they might have an overabundance of inside linebackers. And I, I know there's been, again, it goes back to uh, trade rumor talks. you got nothing to talk about on sports radio. Let's talk about trades. Yeah, where I, I was hearing, you know, possibilities of putting Michael Kendricks in a, in a trade package to get Marcus Mariota, for instance, and st- stuff like that. I, I think Kendricks can be a pretty, you know, good good linebacker in this league. I mean, he is pretty good right now. He could, you know, he could be very good, I think. And I, you know, he's obviously he's fast and athletic and everything, but I, you know, I, that could hurt the defense a little bit. I think if they lost Michael Kendricks, and I, I'm not in total favor of losing him here. You know, if if they're going to trade him or if they're not interested in him or whatever, or he's getting replaced and whatnot. And I, 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 I also, you know, read and was hearing about how. Um, Chip Kelly was not happy with Michael Kendrick. Like when Michael Kendricks had that calf injury and he, and he had to miss a month or whatever. Um, apparently, you know, Chip Kelly was not very happy that um, Kendricks did not come back sooner. But I, I certainly remember vividly on the show back in and this was like October, back when we, had, you know, Tyler Fleming was producing. I remember vividly talking about. How, with this calf injury, and you know, doctor recommendations and everything, like it's not something that you know to play around with. It's it's an unpredictable injury that, 
you know, you, you kind of you got to be you know better safe than sorry that you have to wait until it is a hundred percent, not you know ninety eight percent. Because you know, from what I was learning and everything, and you know, I'm I'm not a doctor or anything. Um, it, it's one of these things where a, a calf injury it can be unpredictable. You know, maybe sort of like a hamstring injury too. You know, you look at guys who have had hamstring issues in the past and everything and stuff like that. It's not, I guess, an injury to to a kind of injury to toy with. I guess you could say it's not. You know, or else you get exasperated easily and stuff like that. So, you know, just some, just some ideology. Obviously, you know, beginning with the Tim Tebow signing and everything. We'll get into more of that on the other side of the next break. Just, you know, just some things I'm questioning here with Chip Kelly this week. You know, it's it's just one of these things. You know, now you got some guys that aren't showing up to these workouts. Michael Kendricks scheduled a Costa Rica vacation during you know during the week of workouts here. I, I don't know. We'll we'll get into it a little more on the other side, right here in the Tyler Werner show. Uh, before we proceed, let me make sure we do these uh, KUR notebook announcements. Attention KU community. The University Writing Center is a free service for students offering advice and assistance with writing assignments from any course or subject. Tutors can assist you in improving your composing process as well as with difficulties with development, organization, style, documentation, and mechanics. The UWC is located in Old Main, room 132. Its hours are Monday through Thursday, 9 to 5, Friday, 10 to 4, and Monday and Wednesday evenings, 6 to 9 p.m. Please call 610-683-4733, email wrcenter at kutztown.edu, or come into Old Main, room 132 to set up an appointment. This message of community interest brought to you by the radio voice of Kutztown University, KUR. Without further ado... We'll hit the next break. The Tyler Werner Show, right here on Kutztown Radio. This is the fifth grade class at Lowry's Park Elementary. And, and you're, you're listening to KUR. 1-800-222-1222. 1-800-222-1222. If you think it might be poison, then the first thing you should do is call 1-800-222-1222. Poison can be anything you're not supposed to take. Antifreeze, pesticide, the wrong drug by mistake. If you breathe the nasty chemical, been bitten by a snake. Call the poison control, we send a hotline. We're here for you night or day. For a poison or drug emergency at home or at work, just call the Poison Control Center hotline. We're here 24-7 with the expert help you need. Free and confidential. Even if you think it's a false alarm, call. one 800 1-800-222-1222 If you think it might be poison and you don't know what to do Call 1-800-222-1222 A message from your Poison Control Center. Twelve twenty-seven, right here on the Tyler Werner Show on Kutztown Radio. As the day... Uh, Appears to get cloudier. So we're getting a little bit of colder weather this coming week. Um, now, you know, right right as Bear Fest is opening up, of course. Now, uh, we check, well, checking in and contributing in, in multiple fashions here on the Tyler Horner Show today. Um, and even Sunday on his, uh, his Chip Kelly uh, joke of celebrating 420 a little early this year or something. Um, we have an update from Wayne, who uh, brought up on the show earlier when he called in uh, the ninety this this poll from ninety seven five the fanatic. Now that the NFL schedule is out um, for the Philadelphia Eagles, asking fans what they thought you know what the uh, I guess the win loss record prediction is or win prediction I guess you could say, and and again I mentioned earlier how. It was like 83% thought seven wins or less. And I looked at it, I thought, that, that cannot be, you know, 
That can't be true. It's I just think somebody owes us an explanation. Somebody may have been That's spamming wrong. it or something and, and whatever else and so I I I, I guess I'm, I'm guessing apparently there was some kind of mispost or some kind of prank or something because uh, Wayne had an, has you know, gave an update here on the uh, on today's post that I put earlier about you know tuning into the show and yada yada. The update is on the on this poll as far as uh, you know the four categories here of fans um, Philadelphia sports fans predicting. 12 or more wins, the uh, percentage is currently 29.5. So, you know, 30%. Apparently, and again, this apparently lends hand to the fact that, you know, there was some kind of missed post or glitch or something. Because, I, I again, I, was, I couldn't believe when it, I, I read earlier that 83% of fans would think that uh, the Eagles will win seven or less games this year. Again, that was a head-scratcher. So uh, 20, 30, and I, I, you know, 12, I, I think is a little over-optimistic. 10 to 11 is at 54.5%. So obviously the, you know, most fan, you know, most people here are saying 10 to 11. Eight to nine wins is at 9.1%. Um, Wayne, which Wayne said himself earlier that he would fall in that um, minority there. As if you listened earlier on the Tyler Werner show. Um, he, he's saying nine or eight. Uh, he said, he said nine first. So I, I'm assuming he's leaning nine. Um, and then seven or less is now down to 6.8%. So that, that seems, that seems a little more accurate, a little more what I would have thought as far as these poll results go. So, you know, since, you know, we bring that up, I brought up earlier and, you know, maybe we'll go through another revision next week. Since it's getting uh, late in the to- into the show today, um, version one of me predicting the Philadelphia Eagles schedule, and this is kind of you know I this is kind of off the cuff a little bit. I went through it last night and kind of had an idea here and there and where I might be wavering. It, it's still early, so but overall, I think the you know this is mostly based on. Sam Bradford comes back um, healthy, fully recovered. Maybe a little unprepared early in the season. I don't know. Maybe not. Um, but nevertheless, playing week one. And if he happens to get hurt again, you got Mark, you know, Mark Sanchez, which I don't think is a huge drop-off from Sam Bradford. Um, and it's kind of, to me, the quarterback situation is sort of reminiscent of last season. Bradford is the, you know, the starter. Or uh, you know, I guess the the Nick Foles in this situation, um, at, at least this season. How's everyone doing? Yeah, um, and and then you got Sanchez as the second string, and then the third string position. Um, you know, I mean, we'll just say, I guess maybe uh, we'll say for now, Tim Tebow. I got is yes. an awesome God here. Now again, hopefully. It doesn't ever come to that where we have to trot Tim Tebow out there. But nevertheless, we'll, we'll, we'll just say for all intents and purposes, that's going to be the third string quarterback for this team. More on that later in the show and this week or uh, next week. I'm sorry. So without further ado, let's let's go down the schedule, um, at, at least as I see it right now. Monday, September 14th. The season's starting a little later um, than I guess normally this year. Begins with a doubleheader on Monday Night Football, actually. That I know the Vikings and the 49ers take each other on. But the Eagles will play at Atlanta at the Georgia Dome, 7 p.m. Eastern Time, to kick off the season. Now, the, the, the Falcons, I, I don't know, they're a head-scratcher of a team. And I just, it's hard to figure them out sometimes. And, you know, they got Matt Ryan, but it looks like they're kind of, they're kind of trying to rebuild here and maybe start rebuilding around Matt Ryan. I, I, I think that the Eagles will come out strong. It might, be, you know, be a decent game, but I, I think the Eagles will go down and beat Atlanta Monday, September 14th. 
The Dallas Cowboys coming to Philadelphia, and now this isn't based off of, um, you know, so much about last season or whatever, but um, in records, win-loss records at home and everything in a way, I'm going to, just the way things work, you know, the Eagles come off a hard-fought game against the Atlanta Falcons, um, and then they come they come home, they lose the first one to the, the Dallas Cowboys. So they, there you go. One and one. Then at New York Jets, Sunday, um, bounce back. And uh, New York Jets, another team. I mean, they have some talent. They're rebuilding. You know, see how who they draft. I mean, they never, maybe they get Marcus Murray. I don't know. But I think, I think either way it turns out, I think the Eagles um, go there and get a win. Two and one. At the Washington Redskins, FedEx Field. I, the Redskins, I, th- you know, probably be the worst team in the division this year. There's just, there's always a lot of question marks with them, and you know, just between everything. And I would have thought that the Eagles would have uh, swept them this past season, but that didn't happen. And uh, but this year, I think that the Eagles will go down. Well, go to Washington and win that game. And they will uh, be. F- they'll start three and one. Then they host the New Orleans Saints the week after. Another team. I you know I I mean they got Drew Brees, but other than that, I mean, I don't know. They're kind of on the downswing here. And uh, I I th- the Saints they're not they're not good on the road certainly in recent years. I'm gonna say the Eagles beat the Saints. Makes them four and one I believe now. Then they host the New York Giants, who, uh, you know, they, I, I think the Giants will be pretty formidable this year, and this will be a, a good test for the Philadelphia Eagles. I think the, the Eagles win this one against the Giants at home. And then the next Sunday, before they head into the bye, they go to Carolina. I think Carolina is going to be a, a decent team this year. They should, you know, The way they finished the season, it showed some, uh, you know, Definitely some promise as they head through here, and so I th- th- that's that's going to be a loss. And the Eagles, I have, I have them five and two heading into the bye, and then coming off the bye, they a revenge situation at Dallas, where I don't know for whatever reason the Cowboys are not as good at, at least last season, some phenomenon, not not very good at home. And it's a revenge situation. The Eagles coming off the bye. The Eagles go down to Dallas. And get the win. Six and two for the Eagles. Then Sunday, the, the next week, they host the Miami Dolphins. I, I I'm calling that a win right now. Seven and two. The Buccaneers at home. They might might have Jameis Winston for the first season, you know, or you know, his rookie year here. And other than that, I mean, they got a they have some uh, building to do certainly. Lovey Smith coming in, you know, head coach in that team. I, I, I'm i going to say the Eagles win that one, which, you know, has them at 8-2. But things start to get a little tougher. When they take on the Detroit Lions the next week, Thursday, they got to turn right around. Um, and, again, a lot of this, I don't know, you know, what the other team's schedule is heading into these games. So if I did know, I mean, that could perhaps change some things. But, nevertheless, the Lions... They lose at, at Detroit. And then the following week, they got the New England Patriots at New England. Just call that a loss as well. So now they're 8-4. and four. Then they host the Buffalo Bills. LaShawn McCoy comes back to town. But I'm sorry with that offensive, you know, their offensive line and their questionable quarterback situation. I don't think that the Bills are going to get it done here. The Eagles get the win. That puts them at nine and four. Then they host the Arizona Cardinals. This this is a game that I could I could go either way right now. There's like this whole um, you know I guess rivalry, sort of with uh, obviously Bruce Arians, the Arizona Cardinals, and the Eagles. You know the past few seasons it seems like they always play each other. This year the games back here in Philadelphia. Tough trip for the uh, the Cardinals this late in the season. I don't know what the 
I don't, I don't know what the quarterback situation will be for the Cardinals at that point either. And I, you know, I think the Eagles' running game, I, I think, will be solid this year. Hopefully they stay healthy enough. I think the Eagles, at least right now, they get the win here at home against the Arizona Cardinals. The Washington Redskins, at this point, as they take them on Saturday, December 26th, the day after Christmas, I don't know what, you know, where they'll the Redskins will be at that point. They might be out of the playoff race. And it's going to be, you know, the Eagles are going to be in the playoff hunt at this point, one way or another. I'm going to say the Eagles beat the Redskins. And I believe that puts them at 11. And then Sunday, to close the season down at New York Giants, put that down as a loss, is the Giants, I think, are going to be fighting for a, their playoff lives. And uh, they might win the game, but I don't know if it'll be enough to get a wild card spot or whatever. So that's, uh, I guess that's version one of me going down the schedule here. 11, I mean, it sounds pretty fa- favorable, I guess, and it, a lot of this is going to, again, a lot of this is hinging on the idea that Bradford is going to stay healthy and that in the draft they're going to, you know, maybe address the wide receiver situation. I don't know. I mean, maybe they move Jordan Matthews to the outside um, because, you know, Riley Cooper and Josh Huff on the outside right now, I don't know how that's really going to pan out. Zach Ertz is coming in, certainly coming into his own. So I, you know, I gotta think that he's gonna be a a weapon, you know, more fre- frequently than not. Hopefully this season. Josh Huff, maybe, maybe I don't know. Maybe they move Jordan Matthews to the outside and Josh Huff. Uh, maybe they try him in the slot. We'll, maybe they draft somebody else. Uh, we'll, we'll, we'll wait and see on that. But the defense has improved, certainly. That's provided, you know, Michael Kendricks hopefully is still around. But, again, the secondary has improved. And uh, and other than that, I mean, the defense, they improved in a few positions. And they have a little more depth. Last year they finished 10-6 and with a pretty identical quarterback situation that they have this year. The running back situation is definitely no worse than his last year. And I would argue... With the rotation of uh, the guys they have now that they got in the offseason, I would argue that it's better. So for the most part, I mean, the only area where I can argue that they're not as good is the wide receiver position. And we, we could still see where, how they address that the rest of the offseason, the, the, the draft in particular. So I, 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 there's no way really I could, I could see myself. Maybe I'll go through it again next week and, I don't know, maybe I'll, I'll come out with uh, – 10 wins. I don't know. There's a, I, I mean, I just think the only way that they go wor- any worse than 10 wins, I think, right now is if they really get hampered by injuries. And I mean, I guess it could happen, but I don't uh, necessarily think it, it'll happen. And, and they even had, they had a lot of injuries last year, even. They had a, you know, shaky quarterback situation amongst other guys getting hurt on the defense and everything. And they, they still held up and managed to get 10 wins somehow. And that doesn't mean I'm giving them a pass this year. I mean, I want to start seeing some progress. And I don't know. Well, it remains to be seen if we see some progress this season. But nevertheless, uh, on the other side, we'll, we'll, we'll close up shop today, I guess you could say, um, with the MVP of the week and a little more uh, talk right here in the Tyler Werner Show on Kutztown Radio. We'll be right back after this. It's telescopic topics, a look into the world above us. Do you ever wonder what started the so-called space race? Why the United States even bothered to put a flag on the moon during the Apollo 11 mission? The answer to that question goes all the way back to the fall of October 1957, when the USSR sent a small 23-inch satellite called Sputnik into orbit around the Earth. So, what's the big deal? For the past couple decades, the United States has been moving away from space exploration as the public focuses on terrorism and the economy. However, back in 1957, having the Russians successfully send a satellite into orbit was a major issue. It was also a national embarrassment for the U.S., since Russian missile capabilities were proven superior. At this point in time, the Cold War was in full sway, both a nuclear arms race as well as a battle of political influence. Russian communism and American democracy were at two opposite ends of a spectrum. 
When Sputnik launched, it surprised the West. Newspapers all over the U.S. feared Sputnik being a weapon of mass destruction. Other papers wondered if it were a device that allowed the Russians to spy on Americans. In reality, Sputnik was made to test the ability of sending up a satellite and have it send information regarding Earth's atmosphere. The first satellite ever to be launched by mankind stayed in orbit for three months and was able to transmit data back to Earth for roughly a month. On top of that, it made 1,444 rotations around the Earth. Regardless, the Russians had succeeded in launching a missile into space, which to both the Department of Defense and the American people worry that Russia had the potential of putting nuclear weapons into orbit that could potentially strike the states. The space race began with Sputnik. The United States, in response to the so-called Sputnik crisis, poured millions into education programs and also funded NASA, which, as we all know, has made tremendous strides in creating new and interesting technologies. It is only natural that 12 years later, with the dedication of popular support and political funding, the United States was able to send the first man to the moon, thus proving that once again, the United States had a clear lead. Telescopic Topics, a look into the world above us. Stay tuned to KUR for more telescopic topics. And for more information or to hear the segment again, click on the Telescopic Topics icon on the KUR website at www.kutztown.edu slash KUR. Telescopic Topics is a production of the KU Physical Sciences Department and is recorded by the KU Astronomy students in the studios of KUR. Thank you for listening, and we'll see you next time. It is quarter of one right here on the Tyler Werner Show in Kutztown Radio. Let's so begin to wrap things up. Again, I was talking earlier, Michael Kendricks, his absence was a bit of a surprise. He's, you know, he scheduled a trip to Costa Rica during this. And I wonder, you know, I know a couple years ago when Kerry Williams was first brought here and, you know, it seemed like Kerry Williams did everything he could to, uh, you know, essentially schedule whatever he could during these workouts. Uh,